Stages of Wound Healing There are four stages of wound healing, hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation, and maturation. In order for healing to happen, each of these processes need to occur and proceed accordingly. Although this process is linear, wounds have the possibility to deteriorate or become worse. If this happens, healing has the potential to work backwards. But if everything goes right, wound healing is a process that moves forward depending on the care you give the wound and the internal and external conditions relative to each patient. In this video, we're going to talk about the four stages of wound healing, and we hope by the end of the video you have a better understanding of what happens when your body heals a wound. At the end, we'll introduce you to Wound Care OC, a wound care specialty office in Orange County, California. Stage 1. Hemostasis Phase When we talk about hemostasis, we're talking about the process by which a wound closes up through clotting. Hemostasis begins with a cut, scratch, or some other type of wound that causes blood to leak from the body. Next, when hemostasis is working optimally, the body's blood vessels constrict and blood flow becomes restricted. The wound becomes sealed when blood platelets stick together, creating a wall of blood vessels. Coagulation, the final step, reinforces the blood vessel wall, also called a platelet plug, by using threads of fibrin as a natural binding agent. This wound healing stage happens very quickly, within seconds of a puncture. When a clot forms it traps blood cells and interrupts blow flow. This is incredibly important because without proper hemostasis, you would just bleed out. When homeostasis isn't doing its job because of disorder or imbalance, it could lead to hemorrhage, also called hypocoagulation, or thrombombolic disorder, also called hypercoagulation. Poor hemostasis can lead to stroke, pulmonary embolism, or heart attack. Stage 2. Inflammatory Phase Inflammation happens when injured blood vessels leak a fluid called transudate, which causes edema. Inflammation is an incredibly important stage in healing because it controls bleeding and prevents the wound from becoming infected. The presence of transudate heals the body by letting repair cells pass through to the wound. Also during this phase, the bad stuff gets filtered out, like bacteria, damaged cells, and pathogens. Swelling, heat, pain and redness are all normal and healthy during the inflammatory phase. This is happening because white blood cells, nutrients and enzymes are all getting sent to the wound to protect it. Inflammation is only a problem when it takes an excessive amount of time to move to the next phase. Prolonged inflammation is a good indicator that you need to see a wound care specialist. Stage 3. Proliferative Phase During this phase the wound gets rebuilt. New tissue gets formed out of a healthy mix of collagen and other minerals within the extracellular matrix. In order for new tissue to form, the wound contracts and a new network of blood vessels are made as oxygen and nutrients flood in. During this stage myofibroblasts cause the wound to contract, pulling the wound in and making it appear smaller. When a wound is healing healthily, you can tell by the colors. The newly formed granulation tissue will be pink or red and you'll see that its texture is uneven. If the granulation tissue is healthy, it won't easily bleed out. Just like healthy tissue is pink or red, dark granulation tissue may mean infection, ischemia, or bad circulation. Maturation phase. We also refer to the maturation phase of wound healing as the remodeling stage, because this is when the wound fully closes, and in the end, it looks as though nothing ever happened. During this phase, any cells that help repair the wound but aren't necessary now are removed in a process known as apoptosis, which is another word for the death of cells. This phase is what brings the wound back to normal. During the proliferative phase, the wound is thick, but when the wound slides into the maturation phase, collagen smooths everything out. Scar tissue is reduced when collagen cross-links form over the wound. Cross-links are what makes the wound stronger. Remodeling starts after the proliferation phase, so the depth of the wound will dictate how long this process lasts. For a more serious wound, this can begin at the three-week mark and last for about a year. The reason remodeling takes so long is that even though collagen cross-linking protects the wound, the wound is still weaker than skin that's uninjured. Injured skin has about 20% less strength than unwounded skin, even once the wound is well into the maturation phase. Most importantly, as you've learned, wound healing is both a complex and fragile process. 
If your wound doesn't progress to the next stage in healing, your wound may become chronic. This happens as the result of diabetes, vein disease, infection, and metabolic deficiency, which is often something we see in the elderly or immune compromised. When you treat your wound carefully, this not only ensures a smooth transition to the next phase of wound care, it can also speed that process up. Wounds should be kept clean and bandaged away from re-injury or infection. Visit Wound Care OC for all of your wound care needs. Dr. Ferry Banamad is a board-certified physician specializing in emergency medicine, wound care, and pain management. Our team will work with you to create an individualized treatment plan that meets your needs and unique conditions. Our clinic includes highly trained and experienced physicians, registered nurses, and certified medical staff who work together to provide you with the highest standards of wound care treatments.